everybody, John True 12 back here again with another video, and today I bring you another Dragon Ball Z movie review. Now, of course, this is part of my 12 days of Dragon Ball Z leading up to Battle of Gods commentary, which I actually recorded already, so that's going to be up very soon. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be coming out in uh, Saturday of April 11th, which is supposed to be the grand premiere at the Egyptian Theater for uh, Fugatsu no F, which... I can't wait to see. I'm not. I, I actually stated this in my commentary, which I hope other people try to, you know, you know, distance themselves from the premiere because I know there's tons of people who, after watching that movie, are going to be spoiling it, and they're going to be fucking trying to, you know, put up footage online. I I can already see it now. Before even it hits theaters this year in the summer, which is practically not even that far away from now. It's going to be everywhere. Some people are going to fucking download that shit. I know it. I can see it already. But I'm going to try my hardest not to see it or download it when it comes out on Saturday. I'm going to try and, you know, distance myself from Dragon Ball Z on the internet for a while and try to just, like, go into a cave. My, my own personal bat cave, if you will. And then I'll see it in theaters. If, of course, if it's not limited. If it's a limited release... I'm going to fucking download it because I'm tired of that shit. It's Dragon Ball Z. You need to fucking spread that shit. Spread it like the fucking plague. Nonetheless, we're here to talk about Dragon Ball Z movies. Non-canon movies. Not canon movies. Non-canon movies. I'm pretty sure I lost you. But nonetheless, I'm here to give you my review on the 11th DBZ animated feature film titled Dragon Ball Z Bio Broly. Which, of course, you guessed it, is the third and final installment of... Of the Dragon Ball Z Broly trilogy. Now, the Broly trilogy consists of Legendary Broly, and, uh, well, Broly Legendary Super Saiyan, rather, uh, Broly Second Coming, and of course, now this film, Bio Broly, which of course a lot of people consider, and myself included, consider Bio Broly to be the worst Dragon Ball Z movie ever. Now, would I consider it to be the worst? I don't think. Others are better than Bio Broly. There's definitely some movies out there in the Dragon Ball Z category that obviously aren't on par with others. Like, for instance, if I had to sit down and, and like, say, like, what other movies that I kind of don't like as much as Bio Broly, I have to say, uh, The World's Strongest, not really a big fan of that movie, and Super Android 13, also not really that big of a fan of it. Um, and I guess it's, it's a tie of, like, a little tie between Lord Slug, Bojack Unbound, and Broly Second Coming. Like, I don't hate those movies, but I can tolerate them, but they're obviously not my favorites. So, there's obviously movies out there in the Dragon Ball Z, you know, series that obviously I'm not a huge fan of. But at the end of the day, it's Dragon Ball Z. We're not supposed to take this too seriously. It's fucking anime, people. What the fuck? I'm not going to take it too serious. And um, that's what apparently some people actually do. They, uh, they actually appreciate this movie for its comedy because it doesn't take itself too seriously. Which I guess, if you look at it that way, then it's a good movie. But for me, I like to consider Bio Broly is like the Batman and Robin of the Dragon Ball Z movies. Um... Which also I gave Dragon Ball Evolution the title, but that's that's what I mean live action wise. Animated wise, it's this movie. Nonetheless, um, this is of course the return of Broly, and in this film features a very, once again kind of similar to Second Coming, a very limited cast. We only get uh, one cameo from Goku. Uh, Goten and Kid Trunks have become the new uh, protagonist of this movie. Gohan is not a part of it. Videl is not a part of it. And we get uh, other characters like Krillin, Android 18, and Hercule as the main cast. Which, to I say, why? Nonetheless, um, th t using the timeline placement, this of course takes place in between, I want to say, the World Tournament Saga in the Boo Arc. And right before uh, the Fusion Saga. It's because, uh, for one, Goten and Trunks cannot fuse in this movie. They're incapable of becoming Gotenks. And secondly, there's no Gohan... There's no Videl, there's no Goku, so that's why I state that. Nonetheless, um, Broly has returned through science, of course. There's a there's a, this billionaire, you know, maniac uh, called Mr. Jaguar, I think that's his name. And essentially, he has created 
like these metahumans or whatever, these biological metahumans, which he wants to use against Mr. Satan, who at this point, of course, because of his popularity after the Cell Games, is the is the world's most famous wrestler, as I like to call him. I like to consider, I like looking back at it in perspective. I like to consider Hercule is like the 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 Hulk Hogan of Dragon Ball Z. If the, if Hulk Hogan existed in the DBZ universe, he would be. Hercule, and that's not me trying to bash Hulk Hogan, but, you know, it stands as it is. Nonetheless, uh, Mr. Satan, of course, is having his own debacle with Android 18, because, if I'm not mistaken, in the canon universe, uh, during the World Tournament, Android 18 actually faced off against Hercule, and Hercule kind of made a deal with her, where, like, if he, if she let, if she let him win, then he would give the prize money to her, because the only thing that Hercule really cares about is keeping up his popularity and, and keeping the, the facade, if you will, that he is the world's strongest man, even though he, you know, technically isn't. Nonetheless, uh, they're having their own little debacle uh, simultaneously after that, so uh, Goten, Goten Trunks, Android 18, uh, go along with Hercule to do this little mini-adventure during the Majin Buu arc. I, th I find it really hysterical how... The Majin Buu threat is happening as we speak, but we're gonna go on an adventure because Mr. Hercule is, you know, shit out of luck. I I don't know. It's it's absurd, but what are you gonna do? Moving on, uh, they come across uh, some characters that we've witnessed in the past from the from the prior movie Second Coming, of course, and apparently the guy who I forget his name, what he specifically his name was. Um, I don't know. It's was it Jaguar? Uh, no, no, it wasn't Jaguar. I don't know. I keep, I'm his name is escaping me at the at the moment. Uh, but essentially, this character from the prior movie essentially acquired Broly's DNA, and he has given it to the scientist to cre recreate the legendary Super Saiyan. Which, to which I say, how did how did they even know that he was a legendary Super Saiyan? Because when you go back and watch Second Coming. The, the 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 villagers and and that specific dude, they weren't even in a fucking scenario. They weren't even there. Like the whole fucking fight took place in the mountains, way distant. I mean, I'm pretty sure they could have saw something, but how do they know that Broly is his name and the legendary Super Saiyan is his title? Whatever. Nonetheless, uh, they this these scientists, these ridiculous scientists, recreated. Uh, Broly, you know, Jurassic Park style, and essentially they want to fucking use him to their advantage, but of course, everything goes haywire, where Goten and Trunks discover that Broly is alive, and Broly breaks out and becomes this mutant type, you know, Sasquatch looking dude, and Goten and Trunks must stop him with the help of Android 18 and Krillin, and of course, you know, Chaos and Thuz further on, and um, there's one thing I wanted to point out prior to uh, continuing with this review is, first off, it's also on the cover. When Goten and Trunks discover Broly is alive, they both do a combined Kamehameha wave and they shoot it out at Broly. Let me state this one th fucking statement because I know a lot of people are going to bitch the second I fucking state it. And that is, why the hell does Trunks do the Kamehameha wave? Trunks does not know how to do the Kamehameha wave, yet he does it in the film and it's on the cover of the fucking movie. Personally, it, it bothers me because Trunks does not know how to do the Kamehameha wave. Once again, uh, I don't even know if Goten could do it. I mean, granted... He did it in Broly's Second Coming, but I let it go because at least the scenario called for it, and, and second of all, it looked really badass. On the other hand, with this movie, it does not have any of those qualities, and on top of that, I don't think any character taught these two how to do Kamehameha Wave. Goku nor Gohan taught, if I'm not mistaken, Goten or Trunks to ever use the Kamehameha Wave. I could be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure maybe Goten learned it somewhere down the line. Possibly. I don't know. But from my recollection, Gohan, the only thing he ever taught Goten prior to the events of the World Tournament was A, how to basically defend yourself, how to basically fight, and of course how to fly. That's kind of the general gist of what Gohan taught um, Goten. Kid Trunks was taught solely by Vegeta. And you gotta remember this. He learned all his fighting skills specifically from Vegeta. Trunks does not have any of the fighting skills of Gohan or Goku. So that means he does not know how to use the Kamehameha Wave because he was never taught how to do the Kamehameha Wave. And I actually stated this 
in my Light of Hope review where I stated that Gohan should not be able to use the Command Mail Wave in that pilot episode, and a lot of people got off on me like, uh, characters in DBC learn how to learn how to fucking use the Command Mail Wave just by looking. I mean, come on, you thought Goku? Uh, shut the fuck up. That doesn't make any sense. Just because Goku did it doesn't mean every other character can do it. One and two, he didn't fucking use it at any point in time in History of Trunks. Tell me when there's a sequence where old, where adult Gohan in History of Trunks uses a Kamehameha wave. He doesn't, which to my recollection makes me believe that Gohan cannot do it. And on top of that, Gohan does know how to do it in the normal timeline because he was taught by Goku in the hyperbolic time chamber. That's why, you fuckers. And on top of that, this, on the other hand, doesn't make any sense because A, Trunks, even if your logic was true, and we're going to like let that allow, like if I'm the god of Dragon Ball Z, is going to allow your stupidity to come along with this debate even though you don't deserve to, and say, oh, characters just look at fucking powers and techniques and then they can do them. If that were true, how is it possible that Trunks could do it? Trunks never saw Gohan use any of its attacks. Up until this point, Goten and Trunks have only fought and have seen fighting twice, which is A, through their training with Gohan and Vegeta, and two, in the World Tournament. Fuck you, that doesn't make any sense. Trunks should not be able to use the Kamehameha Wave, Kamehameha Wave nor could adult Gohan in Light of Hope. Now granted, I like it. I'm not saying I'm bashing it, but I'm just saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying it's wrong. And if anybody had a problem with it, comment below because I love the absurdity. It's fucking awesome. <sighs> Anyways, moving on. Goten and Trunks somehow find a way to try and stop Broly and use the technology at the science lab to basically destroy uh, his dilapidated body, which is already destroyed as it is. And of course, somehow Broly is some what weaker than he was prior to the movies, uh, beforehand. Legendary Super Saiyan, he was a dominant force to be reckoned with. He was basically the Hulk of DBC. Moving on from there, Second Coming, he was still very dominant, but of course you had other characters like Goten, Trunks, and Gohan, and not to mention that Triple Kamehameha Wave or the Family Kamehameha Wave, so you had some problems there. But in this movie, Broly is so weak that he was taken down somehow by Krillin, Goten, and Trunks, and a little help from Android 18. I don't know how that's possible, but nonetheless, uh, Broly is taken down uh, completely and pummels into the earth, and Goten, Trunks, and Krillin, you know, save the day, uh, and the day is saved, of course, but, if, um, but at the end, you know, obviously... There is some depths to be paid. Of course, Hercule, Mr. Satan, if you will, essentially is still alive. He emerges in the sea, of course. Android 18 still wants her money because she's a pimp that way. Nonetheless, um, it ends with more hysterical nonsense. And, of course, we have a cameo from Goku right at the end where uh, Grand Kai uh, asks him and Pycon to basically go down to hell to take down Bro Broly because Broly, for some fucking reason beyond my logic and, and train of thought, has his body, his physical body, and is tormenting people in hell. So Goku and Pycon have to go down and take him down. Which, of course, Goku replies, he's still hungry, he needs to eat first. Nonetheless, that's essentially the entire movie. Which also, that also, you know, that statement I just made also needs a fucking rant, because for one, how is it possible that Broly has his body? Why? He shouldn't have his body. But at the same time, I think to myself, you know what, it doesn't really matter if he has his body, because at this point in time, Goku's a Super Saiyan 3, so fuck him. He could be taken down easily. Plus, with the help of Pycon for backup, you know, that's pretty easy. But nonetheless, I just still find it weird. It's kind of like that filler episode in DBZ during the Otherworld Tournament, where Goku uh, meets Pycon for the first time, and they're, like, taking down Frieza and Cell and down in hell or whatever. Why do they have their bodies? If I'm not mistaken... Uh, based off King Yama's statements in uh, Dragon Ball Z, the series, he sta he clearly states, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, he clearly states that, um, that you, the only, that, or was it Kami? Fuck, I don't even remember, my memory sucks. Nonetheless, one of those two characters essentially stated that in order to have your physical body in the other world, you, you must have had, um, uh, you must have lived a very 
adventurous and sacrificial kind of savior kind of lifestyle, which Goku kind of had. I mean, like, he sacrificed himself dozens of times to save the people he loved, and specifically Earth. He died a good man, so he got to keep his body. Vegeta, on the other hand, got to keep his body because King Yama was desperate and needed him to help out Goku to take down Majin Buu. Yamcha and the rest of the Z-Warriors, you can forgive them because obviously they did the same thing, they're good people. But the villains, why they got to keep their bodies? What the fuck was with that? Why is King Cold, Frieza, the Ginyu Force, Cell, especially Cell, and dozens of other characters got to keep their bodies? That never made any sense to me. I guess they did it just to be cool and like be like, oh shit, look, it's Cell again, shit's gonna go down, and then bam, Pycon kicks him in the face like like the bitch he is. Nonetheless, that's been Bio Broly. Uh, I'm gonna continue to rant on that note by myself because I'm a freak. But nonetheless, Bio Broly is the third and final installment. There has been no real uh, details on Broly ever coming back in future movies. I've heard rumors that... Uh, that there's been plans for Broly to come back for future movies. Like, a lot of people, you know, rumors up the ass of, like, oh, no, Broly, he's gonna be in the sequel series to fucking Dragon Ball Z. Oh, no, Broly, he's gonna be in the third movie after Fugats no F. Oh, Broly's in, you know, he's gonna be in one of the specials. I have heard n no real legitimate statements from Toriyama or Toy Animation that Broly will return, but a lot of people still want him to, so that I guess that really speaks to... Broly's popularity, but as for Bio Broly, I have to give it, for me personally, I have to give it a 4 out of 10, it's, it's just not a, f it's, it's an entertaining movie, but that's all it really is, the animation is whatever, the music is whatever, the story is terrible, uh, everything about it I'm just not a big fan of, Trunks doing, Trunks and Goten doing Command Mei Waves doesn't make any sense, Although people will rant about it in the comment section. I can see it already. Um, th no Gohan. You know, no no Vegeta. No nobody. Um, the day is saved from a diabolical character that was so powerful that it took almost every Z-Warrior to take him down. And that he was taken down in this movie by two kids, two Super Saiyan kids that had no luck in taking him down in the first, in the first place. And Android 18 and Krillin. I find that very unlikely. Uh, all the characters were very useless. Mr. Hercule, I guess it's fun to see him. Uh, people have mixed feelings about him just in general, but whatever. Nonetheless, Bio Broly is a 4 out of 10 for me. It's it's definitely not a terrible movie, but it's not the greatest movie of all time, and it's definitely not my favorite, and it's definitely it's definitely my least favorite of all the films. Nonetheless, um, this is going to be my review for Bio Broly. Let me know what you personally think about that in the comment section below. Also, uh, check out my th my other two reviews for the se the the prior sequels of the Broly trilogy, which are Broly Legendary Super Saiyan. Check that out, if you will, uh, and Broly Second Coming. Please check that out as well. And of course, next up, I'll be giving you my review for Fusion Reborn, which is the first introduction of fusion characters ironically hence the name of the fucking title of the movie but nonetheless i can't wait to give you that review of that and of course saturday this saturday is the premiere of forgot to know f i hope you guys who are going to see it let me know uh what was the experience seeing don't fucking spoil it for me and of course i'll be giving you guys an audio commentary for battle of gods uh so that's gonna be it hope you guys enjoyed subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already and this has been john 12